Greetings all, here we go, more on stimulus control. All right. Now, what we want to think about here is that, I mean, this chapter really talks about antecedent control and things like that, but functionally what this is, is, is looking at modifying things that happened before your behavior in order to change your behavior or change the consequences for your behavior or put you in touch with new consequences. In other words, we're gonna play around with stimulus control, okay? Um, so we can use stimulus control to help us deal with difficult situations. There are all sorts of scenarios where something may be challenging for us uh, and we're having difficulty performing a particular task or a learner is having a difficulty performing a particular task, uh, but we can use some sort of stimulus control to help them get through that because the behavior may already be happening. Right? Uh, I'm trying to, let's get to, there, we'll get to performances here because that one works pretty well. Um, so does sports. I'm just not a sports guy, so <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to it though. All right. Uh, so performances, if you think about the slide here, right, you've got this microphone and uh, if you just get up and give a talk in front of it, let's say a thousand people, that's probably going to be a bit unnerving, right? Especially if you haven't had a lot of practice with it. Okay. Sorry, it's actually really early in the morning. I'm going to have to drink a lot of coffee to keep excited here. But, <clears throat> um, so... Uh, again, at performances, if you're giving a talk in front of, a, like I said, a thousand people, it, it, it's going to be nerve-wracking, and you may stumble a little bit, you may fumble a little bit. In fact, you've heard me fumble quite a bit on these lectures. And part of the reason that I fumble on the lectures isn't because I don't know the content. It's because I have no stimulus control, right? What's my stimulus control when I'm giving a lecture to the computer? The machine. Right, you know, I may have the slides, but that's not what's under control here. Um, it seems to, to me that the discussion, the interaction that I have with you, with you guys as students, historically, is what kind of cues me to say the next thing. Because believe it or not, I I use your visual responses in the classroom. Like if you get that sort of flat affect look, that's just like I have no idea what you're saying. Then if I see that on you know five or ten people, then I'm going to restate <laughs> what I'm doing or what I'm saying. It's a little different when I'm doing it this way because I you know I have no idea how you're reacting to this. Of course, you can rewind it, and I don't really have to restate stuff or rewind. It's kind of an old term. Anyway, um, but you can back up the file, and you can play it again, and you can hear what I've said, so I don't really have to restate things, um, which kind of makes me you know, fumble it along the way. I, I have lost that stimulus control, but we can twist this around, right? So we can, we can spin this whole thing and go the other direction. Let's say that I'm, I have practiced giving lectures in a small group sense, Right? Um, what I can do is when I transfer out to a large classroom or a large setting, or maybe I'm going to be, be presenting at a large conference, maybe I can take something with me that is the same stimulus that I had when I give it in that small group setting. So, for example, maybe I've got the same set of slides. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, maybe I've got the same set of you know, cue cards. That's great. Or maybe I even have something as cheesy as a little rabbit's foot. Right? Anything that I can use to connect my behavior back to that original performance, right? So can I use some stimulus out there? Can I, you know, then that's the idea behind these lecture notes or the, the PowerPoints and things. Uh, and like I said, maybe it's the rabbit's foot. If the rabbit's foot is always with me, I can kind of use that to cue myself what to do. It's like, all right, when I get to this section, I know that I need to hold the rabbit's foot this way and that will remind me to do X, something like that. And it sounds kind of goofy on the surface, but that's really what it's all about is having the environment select for the proper response. And if I already learned one response, that response is obviously connected with something. What, what you want to do is try and bring that something with you to those new locations, and then the behavior is going to be more likely to be performed. So let's think about this in a, from a sports perspective, right? How could we do this in sports? Wait a minute. See, this is one of those scenarios where I would have expected you to respond back to me and it would have cued me to say something else. So um, so I will just move on. Ha 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 ha. Got a guy that goes through a... And he's doing some self-practice with golf and it's about goal-setting behavior and all that stuff, which we'll get into in a minute. But, but the idea is that he imagines himself at the U.S. Open and it's like he's got the the one putt to go and, you know, to stay in the lead, he's got to make this putt, you know, that sort of goofy thing. And... It sounds kind of funny on the surface, but and, and it kind of works, right? It, but it, it doesn't work for everybody in all settings. It takes actually practice to make that stuff work, that, um, and that imagery type, type procedure. But when he then goes out and performs that task in the real world, uh, under pressure, so to speak, he will have already practiced under, the pr under pressure. 
So that the, the stimulus control is already there. He already knows what that feeling might be like um, when when he's got to make that putt to stay in the lead. All right, speeches, performances. I just went through that one. Um, so the question ultimately becomes when you're trying to modify existing behavior, can I use some discriminative, out, discriminative stimulus out there to help me? Right? Can I add a new discriminative stimulus right, to, to pull out a response that maybe it hasn't been present, so to speak, but it, it, it could be? Like it, it, the behavior is in your repertoire and it happens in one context but not another, so is there a way I can bring that one context to the new one? Or the other way around, right? Can I get rid of a stimulus that is selecting for a particular response? And sometimes the answer is yes. So you can.